In this week's midweek ramble, we're talking unpopular knitting opinions. I reached out to all of you over on Instagram asking for you to share with me your unpopular knitting opinions, and you guys came out in droves with all kinds of spicy unpopular knitting opinions, and I've collected several to share with you guys here and share with you a little bit about my take on each of those unpopular knitting opinions. I think it's gonna be fun and maybe a little spicy, so grab something cozy or your knitting and let's get started. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Taylor and welcome to the Midweek Ramble. I don't have anything to show you knitting related, but we have some things we can chat about based around unpopular knitting opinions. So I want to get right into it. But before I do that, not really admin, but it's something I typically do. I want to share with you what I have going in my mug, but I really want to share with you my mug. I have today um, glazed lemon loaf tea by Tazo. And I am drinking it in a new mug that I had designed um, for the channel. And it is in the merch store for the Wool Needles Hands YouTube channel. It's a way that you can help support the channel. You can head over and pick up a piece of Wool Needles Hands merch. There's also some Fiber for the People merch in there as well, which is my hand dyed yarn company. Um, but this is just a little nod to one of my other hobbies, which is gouache painting. If you've been watching the podcast for the last, I don't know, maybe like, five episodes ago, I shared with you one of my gouache portraits that I did of this little damsel here. Um, I had her put on a coffee mug and I, I felt like she was just so um, kind of elegantly disinterested. She just had that look on her face, like look at her eyes, like she's, I don't know if you call those judgy eyes or just, you know, you don't, she doesn't want to be bothered. She can't be asked to do anything other than what she wants to do right now. So I put her on a coffee mug because I thought she was so sassy. And then I also included um, just a simple, you know, answer to anybody who's trying to infringe on your you time. So it just says not now, perfect. And along with her, it's just so perfect. I am so happy with the way that these came out. The um, the image of the painting almost looks like it's painted on the mug. It's really special. Um, so yeah, so that's original art by yours truly with a uh, funny little introverted <laughs> saying or whatever you want to call that. These mugs are available in the merch shop. I link to the merch shop in the description box. Head over and treat yourself to a not now coffee mug and show your support for the Wool Needles Hands channel on YouTube. Okay, let's get into it. I... <laughs> I thought this was a lot of fun to kind of like curate a lot of these unpopular knitting opinions from you guys. I did this primarily on Instagram. I know that some folks don't go on Instagram, I get it, but it was just the easiest place for me to collect some answers um, and be able to access it all in one place. That can become really daunting going back and forth, trying to get uh, responses. And Instagram kind of has a way that I can throw a question out there and it makes it easy for you to respond and I can have them all in one place. So that's how I did it. We're gonna get into it. I have have your unpopular knitting opinions here on my phone. So I'll be kind of going through this rapid fire. I'm not going to expound on every single one of these because there were so many and a lot of them kind of echoed others, tons of the same opinion coming through, which I thought was really interesting. So I just pulled out um, not a few, but I pulled out several and I didn't want to have too many repeats unless I felt like it kind of added to the conversation a little bit for the sake of the video. So we're gonna see what we can do. Like I said, I'm gonna go through these. Some of these I'll be giving you my opinion pretty quickly and some of these we're gonna take a little bit of time to chat about it because it's worth having a little bit of conversation. Okay, actually before I get started, I really wanna make this very plain. Um, this is all in good fun. I did have some unpopular knitting opinions come in where uh, particular yarn companies or individuals or patterns or whatever were, um, there was like a grievance expressed about those things. And there is nothing wrong <laughs> about having opinions about particular yarn companies or yarn brands or whatever and pattern designers and what, because you just, I don't know, you have beef about not the person, but you know, just whatever cost or design elements, or whatever. Having those opinions are totally fine. But because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, I'm not going to be expressing anybody anybody in particular, any yarn company in particular, nothing like that. It'll just be very generic um, because again, I'm not, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. This is all in good fun. Um, we all have opinions and we know what that's like. So we're just having a good time, maybe having a little chuckle and chatting about some unpopular knitting opinions that maybe are worth chatting about because it's just good conversation and it makes us feel like we're all 
kind of included in our thoughts. You know, you start to realize, oh, wow, I'm not the only person who doesn't do this or does do this or what have you. So, okay, enough of that. Moving forward, just so we all know, this is just all in good fun. So let's go ahead and get started. And uh, again, I'm just going to read from what I have here. I'll pop them up on the screen so you can read along with me. So the first one I have, it was one of the first ones that came in. It says, I'd rather not ends then cut tails and weave them in. So this is a person who likes to just tie knots at the end and uh, and cut the tails and not weave them in. I don't know, I feel like I could go either way with that. I have, I have been known to um, tie knots, but I don't think that it was the be all end all of, it wasn't the final thing. I think I went back and I wove in the ends. I don't think I've ever cut the tails after tying the knots for fear that the knots would come out at some point down the road and the project would unravel. So I guess I don't share, I don't share the tendency to do that, but hey, you know, to each their own. I don't understand the hate on purling. I love pearl heavy patterns. I do not like purling. I, um, when it comes to the way that I knit, I guess you could call me a flicker. I just, that's just the way that's comfortable for me. I don't throw the yarn, it tends to just flick back and forth. Um, and purling that way is just not that comfortable. I'm not a big fan of purling. So yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't love pearl heavy patterns and it's not because of the aesthetic or the look of the pattern. It's more so for the process than the product. I love swatching, playing with stitches, colors and combos. Give me all the swatches. Okay. I don't like having to gauge swatch. I think that it's just this step that you have to do before you can get really into the meat of the project and have a good time. However, I do get a kick out of swatching sometimes. For example, um, if you watched the last episode of the podcast, you saw that I talked about um, this new yarn from Noro paired with some fiber for the people kid mohair silk that I'm really excited to use for a terrazzo sweater by um, Petite Knit. I know that I am not in any place right now to cast onto that sweater, but sometimes knowing that you can swatch with the yarn, it satisfies a little bit of that temptation, a little bit of that urge. And so, yeah, I have to agree. I do like swatching for that purpose. I mean, I don't love having to swatch. I don't love the fact that I know that it's necessary. I do, I, and, I, and that's coming up here too. I know that in a lot of cases, it's necessary to swatch. I don't love that that is the case because I would like to be able to just jump right in and not have to worry about it, but whatever. I do, I have fun swatching and getting a chance to have like a preview of what the fabric is gonna look like. I am an English knitter through and through. So what that means if you are an English knitter is that you're a thrower. Traditionally speaking, you're not continental. You um, throw with your right hand as opposed to kind of flicking the yarn with your left hand. Um, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm an English knitter through and through. I don't need you to teach me continental so I can knit faster. I love how sassy that got um, halfway through. <laughs> okay, yeah, I totally agree. I do not think anybody should alter the way that they knit for the purpose of knitting faster. If you find that the way you're knitting is uncomfortable and you want something more comfortable that, that you know causes less fatigue in your hands and wrists, then yeah, change your knitting format. You might find that the fix makes knitting just so much more enjoyable for you. And that was me in the case of going from being a thrower to a flicker. It had very little to do in the long run with knitting faster. It was a revelation because of how much more comfortable it was for me. There was less going on with my hand and my fingers. I had less fatigue in my wrist. Um, everything in general was just so much more comfortable. So that's when it comes to somebody wanting to encourage uh, a different style of knitting so that you can knit faster. I just don't think that that's, I don't think that's great. I think that that's sending a weird message. Um, and I think that it's important that we don't strive to knit faster. I mean, unless of course you work, your, your business is knitting and you sell your knitted items. Maybe you want to be able to crank out more and that's a whole nother soapbox that I have for another time. But I think generally speaking as hobby knitters, you know, I think that, or even crocheters in this fact, um, speed shouldn't really be as much of a factor as I think that we tend to think that it is. So yeah, I don't think you should alter your knitting or crochet style so that you can do it faster if you are simply a hobbyist. Um, yeah. So I have to agree with that unpopular knitting opinion. I hate super bulky sweaters, says the person who submitted this opinion. <laughs> and you, you get a lot of I hate. I 
typically don't like to say that. You know, don't say I hate. I teach my kids not to use the word hate, but I get it. I get it. There are just things to, oh, I hate that. And this is clearly one of them for a lot of people, not just this person. I got a ton about super bulky yarn and knits using super bulky yarn and, and they were all specific to knitting, not crochet or weaving or anything like that. Super bulky sweaters. The pictures, the models that are wearing the knits, of course they're styled in such a way that makes it look really attractive and appealing. But I feel like when you get down to actually putting the garment on and wearing it around in your everyday life, it just does not seem very wearable. And because the yarn is so bulky, the strands of the fibers that go into creating that yarn are also very bulky. You're gonna notice a lot more um, the wear and tear. You're gonna notice that more um, because you're dealing with a fiber and a yarn that is just more noticeable. You see all the little flaws because it's just right there in your face. So for a lot of reasons, yeah, I can see why super bulky sweaters just aren't the greatest. Now, when it comes to knitting super bulky sweaters, I tend to not love doing that because that tires my hands out. It's not very comfortable holding those big needles. Um, you get the work done faster, but honestly, I feel like when you balance out the fatigue that you experience with your hands and wrists, um, it, it kind of almost like add, lines up to about the same amount of time it would take to make a sweater of similar dimensions with a smaller yarn. So. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of super bulky sweaters. I don't hate them. I Some designers have some that I'm just, I think are gorgeous, uh, but I'm not a big fan. Yeah, I guess they're not my favorite. They're not my go-to sweater. Bragging about knitting fast is annoying. Yes, I agree. Don't brag about how fast you knit, unless of course you are competing in speed knitting competitions, then brag amongst your speed knitting friends. But no, I, I first of all, bragging about anything is annoying, but bragging about knitting fast completely undermines the whole purpose for being a knitter and creating like handmade items is that's, you know, it's a slow craft. And the whole purpose of that is to embrace um, the slowness in the craft and to allow that to also bleed over into your everyday life so that you kind of take a more slow approach to daily life in general. So yeah, I think that anything where a person might be bragging, I've never seen this happen, but I know that I'm sure it happens where somebody says some kind of sideways remark that implies that they are so proud and of how fast they can knit. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not, I'm not here for that. I feel like, like I said, that undermines the whole nature of this craft and what makes it special. I hate hand knit socks making them, wearing them, just all bad. Okay, I don't hate hand knit socks. I like hand knit socks. I don't like wearing them with shoes, but I like to wear them around the house, they're cozy. Um, knitting hand knit socks, I go back and forth. Sometimes I'm into it, sometimes I'm not. I think we can all relate. You just have times when you wanna knit some socks and you have times when you just don't have an interest in knitting socks. You'd rather spend that time knitting something else. And wearing them, I like to wear them. So yeah, I, I don't agree with that. However, I have full respect for anybody who feels that way. Fingering weight sweaters are fun to knit. Uh, yeah, so I'll admit I've never knit a fingering weight sweater before. I don't, other than socks, the idea of knitting anything that's fingering weight is not appealing to me. It's just such a fine weight of yarn. But I know there's a big constituency out there of people who just have no interest in fingering weight sweaters. It's just not a lot of time in the day and you have a lot of projects you wanna work on. You just know that when you cast on that fingering weight sweater, it's gonna be sitting there, you know, as a whip for a long time, unless of course, you're a really fast knitter. I'm not drawn to them. Um, and I think there's more to it than, this, than the, the fact that they take a long time and the yarn is really small. I feel like a sweater, in my opinion, a sweater is something that's cozy and somewhat substantial. It doesn't have to be super bulky or super like dense, but it's it, it has to be something. It's gotta have substance. And fingering weight sweaters, to me, I look at them, it's almost like you knit a long sleeve t-shirt. It doesn't look worth it to me. I don't find a lot of, there's a bug. <laughs> I don't see a lot of fingering weight sweater patterns, in my opinion, that look worth the time. That's, I think maybe that's where it is. I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, if you can dazzle me with a fingering weight sweater that just seems to check a lot of those cozy sweater boxes, maybe. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you're gonna knit a fingering weight sweater, chances are there's a shawl that's cooler than that fingering weight sweater you're considering knitting. So go knit the shawl instead because it's gonna use the same amount of yarn and take about the same amount of time and require less like sizing 
you know, you can just kind of knit it. You don't even need to knit a gauge swatch. You can just get to business. So that's my thoughts on that. I just feel like there's not a lot, enough substance in fingering weight sweaters. So I have to kind of agree or no disagree. This was fingering weight sweaters are fun to knit. I don't know about that. Never really done it before, but in terms of liking the idea of knitting fingering weight sweaters, I'm just, yeah, usually I'll pass them up. Superwash wool isn't always easier to take care of. Sags, pills, and sometimes acrylic is the best choice. Absolutely. I 100% agree with this. There's nothing here that I don't agree with. Yeah, I agree with this because it isn't always easier to take care of. It's like I said about the fingering weight sweaters. Um, if you're using a superwash fingering weight yarn, that sweater is going to need to be handled in a proper way so that you don't lose the shape of the sweater because it's usually a little bit closer fitting because of how fine the fabric is. You're going to be getting a lot of movement in there. It's going to move things around. You're going to have some stretch, some, you know, shape shifting, I guess, of the garment because of the superwash nature of the yarn. So yeah, that requires more care almost because you have to be conscious of the fact that that superwash yarn is not as resilient. And that lack of resiliency makes for more work on your part in terms of maintaining shape. When it comes to like being able to wash it in the washing machine and that kind of convenience, yeah, that's great. But if you want to maintain the integrity of the garment and the shape of the garment and the reason you love the garment in the first place, you're gonna have to do more legwork. Oh, and then also to add to that, sometimes acrylic is the best choice. Absolutely, some people can't wear wool. And so sometimes acrylic is best or you're knitting for a child or a man. Mohair is overrated. It's itchy, it's annoying to work with. Why are we held in its prickly chokehold? Okay, I, I'm absolutely held in mohair's prickly chokehold. However, I don't find it to be prickly. It's, just pr it's a preference. Some people like the way mohair feels against their skin and some people don't. So I just think it really depends on what you're into. If you're not into hairy fiber, then you're just not gonna like it one way or another. It doesn't matter. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why I like to include mohair in projects and I do it a lot. Like it definitely has me under its spell. And I think it, I wouldn't use mohair by itself. That does bother me. I feel like my my like cadence and rhythm are off. So I really don't like to, to work with mohair alone. However, I really like to work with mohair in tandem with another yarn. But when you pair um, a strand of mohair with like a DK weight yarn or even a fingering weight yarn, I feel like you're giving the fabric a little bit of consistency, a little bit of, um, substance and yeah it has like a halo but in a lot of cases the halo is pretty um it's not super hairy what you're getting here is a very classic look um something that just looks clean and polished sometimes knit fabric with just a basic wool yarn can have a tendency to look wonky i mean unless of course you're knitting perfectly pristine uh, pristine stitches there is going to be wonkiness to that and that even blocking it will not completely correct because it was knit by a person's hands and this is why a lot of times um you don't see when you go back and you look at traditional knitting patterns you don't see a ton of knitting patterns that are just basic stockinette sweaters. We kind of like that now because we like these classic lines and these basic sweaters that we see, you know, commercially, and we want to be able to create those for ourselves. But when you go back and look at patterns of the past, there's cables, there's lace work, there's other design elements to kind of pull your eye away from just seas of stockinette because I think that ca that can have a tendency to get wonky, um, unless of course it's machine knit. So I think that the addition of mohair allows us to, to create these projects that are just very basic and classic and clean without kind of having that wonkiness because mohair can get in there and disguise, you know, a whole host of natural imperfections that we're going to have in our fabric and our stitches because we're human, um, it can kind of blend that all together. So when you look at the garment, you notice that there's definitely, it's just, it's more polished. If you can get really close to a 70, 30 ratio on mohair to silk, um, you're, you're in good shape. I think that's going to give you a really nice mohair that is mild in its hairiness. And it does a really nice job to kind of temper the fabric. So I, when I use mohair, I use it less as like a, a trend, um, because I I want like a hairy sweater and I use it more because I just like the clean and polished look that it gives. 
sweater. So I understand people not liking it. And yeah, it's everywhere. And I think that sometimes when we see something everywhere, we tend to be like, ugh, like enough already. Let's just knit basic sweaters with basic wool yarn. Like I get that. And I think we all kind of have that you know, that thing that <laughs> annoys us. Like I just said, for all the reasons I just mentioned, I am I like mohair and I can, I definitely see myself continuing to use it. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a really <laughs> amazing yarn to use for garments. Speckled yarn looks much better in the skein than knit up. This was a hot one. Now, if you know me, you know that I am the dire behind fiber for the people yarn. I don't like it when people say that. If you want an unpopular knitting opinion, I said it just because it's said. I don't like it when people, I am the so-so behind the so-so. I don't like that. It's like, I am the dyer of fiber for the people yarn. Okay, I snuck a, an unpopular knitting opinion in there. Um, speckled yarn looks much better in the, in the skein than knit up. I have an opinion about this. And I don't know if it's me trying to kind of evaluate the psychology of this, but here's my thoughts. I know what this person's talking about. We all know what this person's talking about. There is nothing, when it comes to like hand dyed yarn, sometimes there is nothing more lovely than a tightly twisted skein of yarn with just elegantly placed speckles in just the right saturation. There's something about that's it's just magical. It's that contrast. It's just that beautiful kind of separation of color. Yeah, I get it. And sometimes you unfurl that twisted skein to look at it and you think it's still beautiful, but there was something about that tension that just made it really beautiful, made it really lovely. When you see the skein twisted, you see it one way. When you open the skein up and you look at what it actually has to offer you, you're experiencing it differently and you're being driven or led by your expectations. I mean, I don't know how it's feasible for us to expect the yarn to look just like it does in a twisted up skein when it's unfurled. The yarn in a skein is one thing. The yarn unfurled on the table is another experience. The yarn in a cake is another experience. And then the yarn in knitted fabric is another experience. The cake and the knitted fabric are similar experiences, but the skein and the unfurled skein are very different. And so I think that our expectations tend to take over and we feel a little bit of disappointment because we're so enamored by the way the yarn looks twisted up in a skein. There was a, there was a, I don't know if it was a trend, but a few years ago, hand dyed yarn companies or businesses like mine would, and I would do this too, would take pictures of their yarn from a, a foreshortened angle. So you would kind of see like this up close image of the yarn, the knob of the yarn skein, like you would see like that. And then everything else kind of like blur out towards the back. So you'd have like the front of the yarn skein in the foreground so that you could really see the speckles on the front of the yarn. You might know what I'm talking about. Um, I remember when I first started, I kind of started taking my photos like that and then very quickly realized that you're getting such a stilted or slanted or I don't know, like stunted. Thank you. That you're welcome. Stunted perspective on what the yarn has to offer. You're just seeing this like real um, foreshortened angle. And I thought that's, that's not dishonest. It's just, you're having an experience that is different than what the yarn is going to offer you when you open it up to see what's actually in store. And so I started taking top-down photos. Um, and I still, to this day, take top-down photos. Sometimes I'll change it up. I'll hold the yarn a little closer. I'll put it in my hand. But I want you to see the yarn both twisted and unfurled so you can have both of those experiences almost at the same time. Um, and I actually really thought it was cool, the trend in how people would photograph their yarn. It shifted to being in Woolen Boon. Uh, you probably remember Woolen Boon. She doesn't dye yarn anymore, but her photos, she um, started doing photos where you would see the yarn skeins all undone on the like table and then on top of all of those yarn skeins was like a single twisted skein of the yarn and so you got to have simultaneously the twisted experience of uh, <laughs> sounds weird the skein twisted up experience and the unfurled skein of yarn skein of yarn whatever but you would have all of that unfurled underneath so you could have those experiences simultaneously and you're prepared for what that yarn has to offer and i think the person's appreciation of the hand dyed yarn would will change and actually increase like you start to realize wow there's so much going on here beyond what it looks like when you add that tension to a twisted skein so i think it has a lot to do with kind of our perception 
and our experience with the yarn. I think it is very responsible when yarn dyers provide those images. Um, I know that we can't always have those images, but when it comes to the point of sale, when you're selling the yarn to your customer, if, if it's possible to get those extra photos in there of an unfurled skein of yarn, then and it should be done because you're providing that additional experience to your customer so that when they untwist the skein at home, they have they they can expect that. When it comes to what it's gonna look like in a garment, that's like a whole different ball game. I don't have enough time to knit swatches for every single colorway I dye. It's just not feasible for me. And I don't I don't jump on the bandwagon of that being necessary. I think a lot of times we have to go into our purchases of hand dyed yarn with a little bit of um it's not like it's a mystery skein. You're getting a chance to see it, but with knowing that it's part of the adventure when it comes to knitting with this because it's that whole like, oh my gosh, look at how this is working up. I love the way this is working up. This is, you know, alternating skeins so that you can get a nice even appearance of the color or choosing not to so you can get that flashing and pulling, you know, whatever you like. But I think that's part of it. I think that's part of the experience of working with hand dyed yarn. So that's probably where I'm going to leave that. I, I know what people mean when they think it looks prettier in a skein, but I think that it boils down to your perception and your experience being kind of drastically different. Only seeing a skein twisted up in a photo, purchasing that skein, bringing it home and for the first time after however long, opening it up to see what it really has to offer and being kind of crestfallen because you were expecting something else. Whereas if we can start having those experiences simultaneously, we're gonna have a lot less of that disappointment or whatever that is. And then that, that perception of it being prettier twisted in a skein will change a little bit. It'll be more like it's different. You're having a different experience. If that doesn't just like take it overboard. I like knitting seamed garments. I have never knit a seamed garment and I don't like the idea of knitting a seam. No, I take that back. I did knit a seamed garment. I knit a cardigan for my husband years ago and um, it was enormous. It was, it was the biggest thing. It was, it was enough of a sweater to fit me and like three of my husbands. It was, it was horrible. And I didn't enjoy it one bit and I have no desire to knit a seamed garment. Toe up socks are superior to cuff down socks. I can't speak to that very much. I've only ever knit one pair of toe up socks. I didn't like it any better than cuff down socks, but I'm not a prolific sock knitter. So you can chime in in the comments on any of these, please feel free to chime in in the comments. Toe up socks, are they superior to cuff down socks? Let me know. Super chunky knits. <laughs> Super chunky knits mostly end up looking sloppy. I don't know if they mostly end up looking sloppy, but I think of all the types of knits, they have the most potential to look sloppy. I don't always weave in ends. I don't judge you, but I always weave in my ends because I don't want, I don't like that incomplete feeling of having little like ends inside of your garment. Like I tie knots to secure yarn ends until I can weave them in. Yes, that I do do. I tie the knots to hold them in place so that when I block the garment, they don't like wiggle around and then I can weave them in at the end. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just what I do. Rustic yarn is amazing. Yeah, rustic yarn is amazing, but sometimes rustic yarn is just too rustic for my preference, for my taste. Sometimes it's just, it's just too scratchy. It's too wooly and sheepy, and that is a me thing, not a yarn thing. But yeah, rustic yarn is amazing. I mean, who doesn't wanna feel closer to like, I don't know, provincial life? Is that even, the thing, you know, like, you know, you know, like living out in the countryside and like picking mushrooms and like harvesting berries and having a wood burning stove. All right, I was about to read this one, but there is an actual brand here and I don't want to say the brand, but it's enough of blank. It's unaffordable for most. And that's as, that's as much as I'm going to say. Um, the yarns, there are yarn companies where the yarn is very expensive. Just like there are car companies where the cars are very expensive and clothing companies and food and all of these things, some things are really expensive. And if you don't like that thing, and if you don't like that people are using that thing, I don't think that anybody is at fault there. I think what can be done, like I, I just, what I will say is that some things are expensive and you can't blame anybody for that. But as a community of knitters, Perhaps folks like myself, 
um, people that do a lot, work with a lot of different yarns or at least strive to work with different yarns and we kind of share our work with you. Um, perhaps folks like us should do more to broaden the horizons of what yarn is available to meet kind of like the needs or the aesthetic of other yarns that maybe are just not as affordable for some. Not that there's some requirement that we do that, but that maybe we should. And I actually had an idea about that. I was thinking that there are a couple of brands of yarn um, that are unique in their construction that have counter, that have more affordable options that can do this, do similar things. And maybe it would be kind of cool to do a video where we talk about like the Lux version of this kind of yarn and the more like budget version of this kind of yarn. You don't see, I mean, that's something that's talked about a lot. You don't see a lot of videos about that. At least I haven't. Um, but where you have like an alternative. So I think that it's less about blaming, um, not blaming, but like getting upset that the company itself is charging what they're charging because they have reasons for that and you can't blame a company for that. Um, I mean, I guess you can, but I tend not to because everybody businesses have their reasons. Um, but I think what we could do is ask the, the knitting community, say, hey, let's like talk, let's talk, let's start a conversation about alternative yarn choices, like budget-friendly yarn choices. Um, so that we all kind of, so that the, there's information out there. Not because you have to, not because there's some kind of moral responsibility to do that, but just so that the information is out there and it can help people. It can make things more approachable. It makes the craft more approachable. Um, and it's just, it's interesting. We all like budget options, you know, budget options that nobody would ever know. Um, that kind of thing is fun. So I don't know. That's kind of my thoughts on on that general kind of grievance that I think some folks have um, is that it's not about placing your frustration or, or directing it towards the company that's charging what they're charging. More about just being like, you know what? It bugs me that I, you know, I want to knit with that yarn. It's just not affordable for me. I wish it was more transparent where I could get something similar. Where's the information? Come out. People come out and help me find an alternative. So maybe we can come together as a community and kind of like do that, where we just make that, we normalize finding alternatives and budget yarns. I don't know, is that making sense? Bobbles look like weird nipples all over a project. Yes, I still love them, but they do have that effect. And whenever I'm like wearing a bobbly sweater, I have this tendency to like go like this to the bobbles. Like I'm diddling my bobbles, so weird. All right, there you have it guys. A quick rundown of some unpopular knitting opinions. I'm not sure if this video is going to run long. I'm probably gonna be cutting a few out, but I had fun doing that. It's fun to kind of air your grievances, I guess, if that's what that is. We all have opinions. We all know that. Um, some of them are unpopular and it's important to feel like you can come out and share some unpopular opinions from time to time, as long as you're being nice and you're not doing it at the expense of somebody's feelings. I appreciate you taking the time, hanging out with me today, um, chatting about some of these things. Please feel free to uh, participate in the comments down below. I would love to hear some of the unpopular opinions that you might have here over on YouTube. But in the meantime, and until I see you guys again for episode 61 of the podcast, which will be coming your way on Saturday, Happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.